Hello, Baggies fans. Welcome to expressandstart.com. My name is Johnny Dreary. And as always, I'm joined by the Albion correspondent, Lewis Cox, who has just been meeting with Carlos Corbran ahead of Albion's long trip to Carrow Road on Saturday. Now, Coxie, it's been an exciting week. Everyone's getting excited about the uh, the derby in a couple of weeks' time, but I'm sure that's definitely not the case for Carlos Corbran, who's been <laughs> just focusing on on Norwich. You've just spoken to him, so we'll start with with uh, with injury injury news and stuff, it's easing a little bit for Albion at the moment. We've obviously had Daryl DK coming back in recent weeks, um, but he's given a bit of an update today. One on Jason Malumbi, and he's also talking about spoke also spoke about Jed Wallace, who we saw um, last week uh, briefly. What uh, what can you tell us about that? That's right, Johnny. Yeah, he, he did. Uh, just a quick one, Carlos did field a few Wolves questions, but uh, there was very little said. Should we said, you know, it's full, <laughs> full Norwich, very much blinkers when it comes to yeah. the army for now, which is perfectly obviously understandable and, and expected. So, um, yeah, so we, we've got, um, as you say, the, the, the general injury picture is is clear, and isn't it? And it's in a, in a decent place now, which is welcome after I think the season we've had really but um there's a bit of a blow bit of a setback to report on on the back of today's presser and it's it's not an attack it's actually a midfield one um we're expecting Jason Malumbi to be back and around it sort of you know available probably on the bench for for tomorrow in in Norfolk in Norwich but um bad news really he's had a setback with that foot problem so been struggling since about New Year's Day. He played down in Swansea in that defeat, but we found out afterwards he was having injections to get through it, some pain in his in his foot. I think going back to the Leeds game, possibly at the end of December. And um, yeah, the injury's sort of worse than first feared, or it's not progressed and it's actually gone the other way and got worse. So Malumbi's been sent to a specialist. They're getting obviously a a second, more thorough, deep opinion on that. Time scales unknown, but weeks it's it's feared really and. I know Malumbi hasn't been a first team regular starter for much of this season, but it's, it's a blow, isn't it? He's, he's at depth in midfield, you know. Uh, OK, Kushlu and Moa have been the, the two in the middle of the park, but Malumbi's typically sort of first reserve, isn't he? The one coming off the bench to add that energy and legs to the game. And yeah, it'll, it'll be a miss to the to the general match day squad, no doubt. And obviously a, a doubt for the derby as it is now as well, which is a bit of a blood and thunder, bit of a Malumbi game, you might have thought, the... Um, the FA Cup tie, so a bit of a shame not to have him available. Obviously, they, they thought he'd be in and around it, and it's 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 not cleared up, unfortunately. So, yeah, that's that's a, a bad news on him. Quickly on Wallace, as you mentioned, the skipper, yeah, he got back from that adductor problem last weekend, didn't he? And looked really bright and sharp from the bench. I thought, good news, he's trained perfectly norm normally for the whole week, and Carlos described him to to me as being 100. percent So, you know, totally ready to go. Totally, I, I thought he'd be back in starting contention and, and I'd I'd back Wallace to be in from the start personally tomorrow now I just think if he's fit and ready to start get him involved you know Fellows and Reach certainly Tom Fellows did very well last time out didn't they but if Wallace is is ready get him in and hopefully John Swift is is good to go again you know st- started last weekend didn't he looked a bit a little bit off the pace but each sort of minutes and training for, for him is good and uh and yeah just very briefly Johnny Carlos Corbran himself has been a bit under the weather hasn't he I mean it's Everyone is under the weather at the moment, aren't they? Let's be honest. I've been under the weather since Swansea. You've just told me you're under the weather. So <laughs> that car journey uh, down the A14 between the two of us is going to be fun tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, the the Albion head coach missed the start of training this week. I think Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at least, or or Wednesday. Um, yeah, re- really, really sort of bad. Had to stay away and was 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 really sort. Of, I don't know if it was a sickness bug or whatever. He, he's totally fine now, but was under the weather to the point where he was saying he could, you know, sort of barely struggle to get his laptop open or watch the laptop or TV screen. So, yeah, he, he was struggling a bit. But training went on. You know, they, they planned training around it and the coaches were perfectly capable to to lead without him. That's how he said a good team should work. And, uh, yeah, he's fine now. And he was in, you know, in great form as ever just then speaking to us. So, uh, Gaffer's all right, thankfully. Wallace is OK, the skipper. A bit of a shame about Malumbi. Since you last spoke to Carlos Corbran, there's been movement in the in the transfer window. We talked about Andreas Feynman um, last Saturday after the game, when we knew it was on the cards. All confirmed this week. He's come in um, on loan until the end of the season. Obviously, Taylor Gardner Hickman separate deal, but has gone to Bristol City um, for a fee in the region of, of 1.3 million. Um, has he said anything about his new new man today? And spoke anything uh, spoke about anything else to do with the transfer window? I know he ideally liked to win. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I should have said actually, we're, as well as speaking to the head coach there, we we spoke with Andy Vyman as well, which was, you know, a pleasure, a real joy actually. Great, great speaker, obviously, 
knows the game, doesn't he? Knows the level, knows the area. You know, it all seems to fit perfectly. Actually, he was joking about how it's significantly shortened his um, commute. Andy Vyman, <laughs> little trip down the road now. Al- always been based in the West Mids, really, since his time at Villa. So, um, yeah, we had the chance to speak to Vyman. When, when I spoke to Carlos Corbin, as you say, Johnny, about his first recruit of the window, he just sort of waxed lyrical about a couple of things, really. First of all, the experience and the know-how of the division, which we know is something Corbin wanted in terms of being able to adapt straight away and come in and, and feature straight away, affect the game straight away. But the biggest thing was the versatility. He was he basically named off every position he thinks Vyman can play, and there were several, you know, there, there really were... It, you know, from from wing back to centre midfield, but obviously, you know, number 10 out wide positions, but more so that sort of deep number nine. You know, he can play the number nine out and out centre forward, but more so just a, a bit of a reserved front man. But yeah, from what Corbin said and from what Wyman said as well, you, we can expect to see him in a number of positions, I think. You know, be it a 10, be it the nine, be it out wide. God, if there's a shortage at wing back, he might have to do a job there. But I think it's... um. Yeah, quite enthused after hearing them both speak about it today, Vyman and, and Corbran. It, from what I hear, he's hit the ground running in training, looks sharp and fit and, and ready to go because he hasn't featured too much for Bristol City this season, has he? Just nine starts in the league. So, yeah, very much fit and ready to go. I'd be surprised if he started at Norwich tomorrow. But, um, yeah, certainly be in the squad and ready to get his first minutes. Just a shame that he's cup tied, isn't it? Just a shame <laughs> about those few minutes for Bristol City in the cup. But, um, yeah, he'll be cheering on in the stands, I'm sure. I'm sure he will be. Just finally, you know, Carlos Corbin obviously all focuses on on Norwich. You know, he fielded a couple of questions on the Black Country derby, but his focus is on Norwich. What you know, what's he said about that, Cox? He obviously another side that are potentially vying for a, a playoff spot. You yeah. know, and you know, as you said in your some of your comments prior to 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 Saturday, you know, it's another chance for Albion to make a big statement. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a good. It'd be a, look. I know Norwich probably this season aren't to the level that. I have been of, of of late, certainly in this division. Obviously, serial sort of promotion winners of of late, aren't they? But it would still be, I think, to go there and win a, a big sort of bit of a statement result. I think um, in the context of where we are in a season where the, the overall playoff picture is, yeah, still feeling the scars from the last away league game, aren't we? The last away game down in Swansea, something to recover from there. And generally, Albion's sort of indifferent away form from from the Hawthorns, I would say. So. Yeah, it'd be a big result to go and get. I think a couple of things in Albion's favour, not least Norwich being in FA Cup replay action last night down at Bristol Rovers, by the way. I mean, they've had to really go some all the way in that replay last night and then travel back to to Norwich. So early hours of Thursday morning, you'd think they'd have been on the road. So I think that tips it in Albion's favour. Um, obviously, the Boxing Day game at the Hawthorns that finished 1-0 to Corbrand's men. Um Albion were much better than one nil that day, weren't they? They were they were comfortably clear of of Norwich that day, and it it, it flattered the Canaries a bit, if we're honest. Though obviously there was a red card, weren't there, to um, Borgia Science, was it? The the Spaniard who looked bright actually, and so so yeah, that maybe would have yeah maybe would have tipped you know tipped it to Albion that day going against the ten men, but Albion were much a better team. That that's not going to sway what Corbin thinks or says about the the game or always players really i mean we'll look at it as a factor but the the one thing he actually pointed out carlos corbin was was the return of josh Sargent for for norwich who was uh i, I believe he was injured i'll have to check that but unavailable for the hawthorns game a few weeks ago and and he's praised him as one of the most sort of influential attackers in the division really and it, he i think having him there as a bit of a figurehead bit of you know someone to lead the line is is a big factor for the for the host sorry tomorrow compared to what they had to work with in the black country a few weeks to go uh, ago so he Corbrand, you know as you would expect is taking nothing lightly taking nothing for granted the fact albion won comfortably recently and he sees he sees rightly i think as we all would looking at norwich's squad on paper a, a strong side who let's be honest they should be higher than where they are in the table are they 11th i think um should be should be better placed than they are however we know you can throw a blanket over all of those sides realistically can't you that are chasing a playoff spot so um I think you'd have to put Norwich down as still a playoff rival, you know, challenger. And that's why I think going there and getting three points would be quite significant tomorrow before we can finally turn our head towards a, a certain fourth round tie. 